آزادی بیان یعنی لون تویو فری سپیچ Thanks very much. The future will have no pity on those men and women who possessing the extreme privilege of being able to speak truth to their oppressors take refuge in an attitude of passivity, of mute indifference, or even of cold complicity. This debate is not about freedom of speech. This is one of the most spurious criticisms of Roads Must Fall that there've been and there's a long catalog of spurious criticisms. This debate is about where Oxford sees itself, how it presents itself, and this is a moral and an ethical debate about ethical reflexivity. And it's about that debate that I'm going to speak for the first section of my remarks. The second section will deal with how Oxford has responded to the initial debate that we sparked and I'm going to be arguing that Oxford's response only reinforces the need for a movement like Rhodes Must Fall more than when we initially started the campaign itself and where do we go from there so let's deal with some of the critique which centers around three strands this question of historical reflexivity free speech and the idea of safe spaces now we've been thrown in with a hodgepodge of all kinds of movements all over the world as if we all represent some kind of monolithic being as if free speech and no platforming advocates in one university are all part of some grand conspiracy roads must fall as a movement that stands on its own and you can't critique us by critiquing the other movements that are going on around the world you need to deal with our arguments directly Now let's talk about historical preservation because this lies at the center of this question of free speech. We're not preserving history by preserving a glorificatory statue of Cecil Rhodes. What we're preserving is a self-soothing mythology. We're preserving a misleading narrative at all costs. What we're doing is drawing a ridiculous false dichotomy between historical preservation and ethical awareness. You can achieve both. If we put the statue in a museum, we would both preserve history and deal with the question of ethical awareness there's no false dichotomy and we we should stop being straightjacketed into these extreme positions it's also a deep obfuscation of history to imagine that cecil rhodes himself embodies the history of that period if we really wanted historical accuracy we'd probably put a statue of the 60,000 people who the british south africa company company's police slaughtered but where does the free speech question come into this i mean if free speech enters into this it's about the fact that students historically and currently marginalized by the oxford dominant culture and ideology should be allowed to ask or demand of the university that it change its current situation if free speech enters into this it's on the side of roads must fall unless there's some kind of inalienable inalienable right to a horcrux unless uh, by some strange logic statues enjoy free speech we have never called for safe spaces what we are saying is that oxford remains a safe space for the statue of cecil rhodes and for the the old boys club that runs it we're not asking to be treated specially we want this we want to cease the special treatment of those people whose identities are affirmed by a statue of someone who slaughtered 60,000 people and is responsible for the destruction of hundreds of millions of lives through the institution of apartheid both in South Africa and in places like Zimbabwe. So we think that this whole free speech attack on roads must fall is spurious. We've never criticized anyone's ability to debate with us we've always taken public platforms we've actually invited people who disagree with us to public platforms which which they refuse and we fail to see how free speech enters into this uh, in a critique of roads must fall having said that let's deal now secondly with the university's response to this campaign which is quite frankly shameful a group of students asked for a statue to be removed and by the way nobody's calling for anything to be torn down or exploded or anything that's just ridiculous we've said 
would you remove this statue which we think enjoys undue pride of place? And Oriel College says, okay, we're going to listen to you. And two weeks into the term, they turn around and say, oh, you know that whole debate thing? Sorry, that's, yeah, sorry, that's, that's done. Um, unfortunately, we, we, we're not going to debate anymore. What on earth does that say about the university, about Oriel, about the refusal to engage in a debate? What really happened was that they started the debate and Rose Must Fall actually started winning it. I mean, we won at the Oxford Union, hardly a bastion of racial radicalism. And then suddenly, when they realized that people were listening to these arguments and realizing that these arguments had merit, the whole debate was shut down. And they turn around and accuse us of being against free speech. Let's not even go into the donor question and whether that means that any time students or the wider university sparks a conversation and a donor has a problem with it, that ends the debate. But nobody seems to think that that's a threat to free speech in Oxford. And finally, we have my favorite protagonist in this whole question, Lord Patton, who gets on radio as the... Do you know what you'd have to do to be the Chancellor of Oxford if you were black? You would have to have cured cancer, be the Secretary General of, of the United Nations, and an all-around good guy or woman, or someone who's gender non-conforming. Some mediocre former colonial governor is the Chancellor of Oxford and he gets on radio and starts telling people that if, if we disagree with having a statue of Cecil Rhodes, we must go elsewhere, and then compares us to the Chinese government. And free speech is against Rhodes Must Fall? Shame on Lord Patton. He should actually, quite frankly, resign for that statement and, and what it means and how harmful it was to this entire debate. So we think that there's even more of a need for us to focus on Oxford's problem of racial bias. We're going to continue with our demands for iconographical change in addition to the wider changes that we think are needed at this university because we think they're all interlinked. And the university's response only reinforces the need for this conversation, the need for this debate, and the need for a movement like Roads Must Fall to rid us of the harmful ideologies that continue to persist in this university. Thank you.